Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. I got an email from Cynthia that says, Dear Professor R, every time my friends and family visit my studio, they want me to clean their jewelry. I'm afraid to do this because I'm afraid I'm going to either damage their jewelry or I'm going to lose a diamond from one of their wedding rings. Any advice? Well, Cynthia, why don't you just tell them, clean your own damn jewelry? <laughs> I don't even want to do my dishes, let alone clean somebody else's jewelry. But it comes with being a jeweler. So let me show you an easy way to do it. It's called the ultrasonic machine. Now, this is a pretty standard one. It just happens to be the one that I own. They can be smaller or huge for industrial purposes, but they all perform the same function of cleaning. Now, the way that it works is that in the base of the ultrasonic, there's a transducer that creates sound waves that move the fluid in the tank of the ultrasonic in such a way that small microscopic bubbles will create themselves within the spaces of the solution of the water. And as they hit a solid object, the cavitation action or the imploding of these little bubbles will pull dirt and grease away from things. So it's great. It's like you can put some things in and walk away. Now, this one, like most of them, has a lid. I don't ever use the lid. The lid's there to kind of keep the tank warm. But if you've got a heated unit, just leave the heater on while you're working and it's always going to stay warm. And like your pickle pot, if you forgot to turn the heater on, guess what? Just like cold pickle works, cold ultrasonic solution works as well. Now every system is going to have a basket or some other device to keep things from falling to the bottom of the tank. And you want to use these devices because you don't want to ruin the transducer that's at the bottom below the tank, nor do you want to wear a hole in the bottom of the tank or damage it. And you can damage the pieces that you put into it if they sit right on the bottom. They'll get scratched on that surface. So you want to use the basket or some other device. Now, other things that go into this, well, you want to have a good cleaning solvent. Guess what? Water is a great solvent. And what I would recommend is if you live in an area where you don't have a high mineral content in your tap water, go ahead and use tap water. But things like distilled water or deionized water work even better because there's no weird mineral structure in there that's going to impede the cleanliness of the, of the process. Now, the thing about water is that it has a surface tension to it that's natural and you need to break that up in an easy way give it a squirt of detergent. Now this is just soap detergent from my, my doing my dishes or the ones that I'm avoiding. The detergent actually is a surfactant that will break that surface tension, allowing the water to really move in a faster, more free way. And that will make it clean better. Now you can add to this a little bit of ammonia or you could add some other kind of degreaser if you want to. And this is really good for cleaning diamond jewelry. But here's the thing. If you do put either ammonia or the degreaser, which might also have ammonia in it, be sure to leave yourself a note somewhere on your machine that tells you that you've placed ammonia into the solution because you never want to clean anything that has ferrous metal as part of it in the ultrasonic with ammonia present because ammonia will promote rust. So in other words, if your husband is working on the car and he needs to clean up a bolt or something, he could clean it in your ultrasonic, but you don't want him to do it if there's ammonia in there. Okay, now, so I've got basically some water and some detergent in there, which is enough. Now think about it, this is an electronic device. An important safety issue is you want to buy one that has a three-prong plug. If you buy one used and somebody's clipped that off, don't use it. it. It could give you an electric shock. So make sure you have a good grounded plug and, pr and plug it into a grounded outlet. So let me do that for you right now. Okay, so we're ready to go. Now, let's talk about other things that can't go in there. 
You don't want to put anything organic into the ultrasonic. That's a pearl, a piece of horn, your hand. This is your most precious precision tool in your entire workbench. Don't stick your hand in here. You could get a shock, you could get scalded from the water, or repeated dipping in and out could really affect the connective tissues and bones in your hand. So nothing organic in here. Now if you look over here, I've got a little display of things that are also items that you should think twice about putting in. Number one, if you've got something like this, it's a ring that's completely made out of a piece of carnelian. Something that's just solid stone. Unless you've checked it to make sure that it doesn't have a lot of inclusions on it, don't stick it in because the way that this works, the ultrasonic can penetrate those inclusions and cause the stone to split or cleave along those lines. So be careful with things like emeralds and opals. Any loose stones, be sure that you really loop them well before you put them in the ultrasonic. Now, the next two items here are pieces of jewelry that, you know, they, they look very simple and, and they're all metal. What's the issue? Well, the issue is that these pieces have a history to them. And I don't want to damage that patina. If I stuck these in the ultrasonic with ammonia present, it's going to wipe out that patina or do something weird to it. And I've destroyed the history that's present on that piece. So it might be better just to clean these up a little bit with a polishing cloth. Now the ring next to it is like a triple whammy. I don't know what part of the ring is made out of. I know that it's layered. I know that it has a patina on it. I know that it has emeralds on it. Best to probably just hand clean it. Now the last one is a good example of something that could go in the ultrasonic. I've looped it. The stone is clean. It doesn't have any inclusions, which is great. And it's a solid gold ring. So it's very easy to reach into the back and clean the back side of the stone. Now here's the thing. Do you really want to put this ring in the basket and have it ride on the surface of this metal basket for three to six minutes? Probably not because the underside of the ring could get scratched. So you need to think of an alternative. Now if you're really, really, really scared, you could just dip your toothbrush into the solution and scrub inside and outside, and you're probably going to be good. But if you want to be a little bit more thorough, what you can do is turn on the ultrasonic and get, get it working. Then hold the piece with tongs, and I'm using bamboo tongs that are tipped with rubber. These are photographer's tongs. I can hold these and I can hold the ring in the center of the solution and go in with the toothbrush and still do the cleaning inside the tank. That works just fine. All right, another solution is you could empty out a tea bag and insert the ring into the tea bag without tearing it. And then you can just dip it in and hold it in the center of the tank. Remember, you don't want anything touching the walls or the side or the bottom of the tank. And that would also work very, very well because um, if you're a little nervous, the paper is going to reduce the amount of pressure or the cavitation that happens on the surface of the ring. Now, here's another cool trick. I have to turn off the ultrasonic to show you this one. If you're cleaning a diamond wedding ring and you're afraid that stones might fall out, take a bag that you might normally just package work up to send it out to you know a client or another jeweler to work on part of it, and fill it up a little bit of the way with solution from the tank, drop the ring in, and then close the bag tightly, leaving enough room for air so that the baggie floats in the tank. And then now, the pressure is reduced. If anything falls out, guess what? When you remove this out of the tank, all the stones, if there's one, in, the one that's fallen out of the setting, it'll be in the baggie and you just need to clip the corner and let it drain out or tip it over. And all the parts are still in the baggie. So you could easily take it to somebody and have the stone reset. Now, what you're probably wondering is, well, what is this good for on a day-to-day -day basis? I mean, yeah, I can clean my friend's jewelry when they come in, but what am I really going to use this for? 
This is a workhorse in your studio. There are times when you need to grab the basket and fill it up with the jewelry that you're working on to make sure that your accuracy and precision is maintained. While you're working on pieces, you're getting your finger grease all over them, you're getting lubricant from the saw blade, and maybe you've been buffing pieces and you've covered them with grease from the buffer. And you need to see if you've done it correctly. That's when you load up the basket and drop it into the ultrasonic for a few minutes to clean these pieces up and make sure that you've done your best job. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out more on the OnlineJewelryAcademy.com. Be a subscriber to the channel and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for watching.